President Obama weighing new measures by which he might bolster the Iranian nuclear deal during his final, uh, well, just less than two months in office. The new actions would include, we're told, allowing more American businesses to enter the Iranian market and lift additional sanctions of some sort. President-elect Trump has called the Iranian nuclear deal the worst deal ever. His appointees for both National Security Advisor and CIA Director also strongly oppose the deal. Joining me now, the former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, American Enterprise Institute Senior Fellow, John Bolton, also Fox News contributor. John, great to have you with us. And uh, let, let me ask you, uh, as everyone knows, your name at the top of uh, uh, the list of candidates uh, to be the Secretary of State, we're told. Uh, so tell us, what is the latest from Bedminster or Trump Tower? Uh, Lou, all you're going to get from me is name, rank, and serial number. I was afraid of that. We were looking for a big lead here tonight. Uh, well, I wish you a, a lot of luck, uh, Ambassador. Thank you. Seriously. Uh, let's turn to the, a couple of very serious business issues for this country, and that is a lame duck president with less than two months remaining in his term talking about bolstering a deal that uh, the president-elect says is uh, the worst deal in history. What, yeah. is, what are the hazards? And what is the fix? Well, I think the deal is clearly in trouble, quite apart from anything that uh, the president-elect or any of the deal's other critics have said. It, it's a bad deal in and of itself. And so what you see uh, now is a fairly desperate effort uh, to try and get more American businesses into trade or investment deals with Iran. And this is the underlying theory that if you can suck in enough businesses in the United States and Western Europe, uh, you'll make it uh, economically and therefore politically you know, this, impossible to withdraw from this, the deal. That's what Obama's up to. This, I, I mean, he has a template, doesn't he? Uh, when it comes to health care, he wants to suck in all the young people who don't really need health care so that he can preserve what is the, one of the worst architectures for any uh, kind of plan ever, that is Obamacare. Uh, I mean, this is a... A president who seems to be admitting that the deal isn't quite going the way he wanted, isn't what the American people wants, nor certainly the, uh, the incoming president wants, and he knows that Obamacare is a disaster, he can't even hide from that, there's literally nothing left of his so-called legacy. There's nothing. Well, these are the two, it's a smoking the... heap. Yeah, these are the two signature initiatives, Obamacare in the first term, the Iran deal in the second, uh, and I don't think either one of them will survive. You know, uh, th and that's why the administration on the Iran deal has been scrambling around, leading uh, Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, as you know, to call John <laughs> Kerry a, a shill for the Ayatollahs, acting yeah. as though he's the chairman of the president of the Tehran Chamber of Commerce. So I, th I think... Uh, I like the uh, idea Trump of Ryan and Kerry becoming sort of... Uh, Polar opposites there uh, on the uh, on, on the battle, uh, but uh, it, you know the sad part is neither one has done what they should have to preserve the integrity of the nation's interest in, in permitting the deal. Uh, the same can be said of uh, Mitch McConnell. Uh, it, the, the GOP performed terribly uh, in all of that. Uh, you know, obviously well, and that's it's the president's deal, but uh, why in the world they were not in court to stop it? Why they did not go to the highest court in the land to assert the Constitution? is beyond me. Well, it's not well, entirely it, it's, beyond it, me. I know it's because other presidents have created such an imperial office that they couldn't. Well, you've just said everything I was going to say, but, oh, but that's why I think the president I take elect, it all back? Can I do that? No, that's okay. That's fine. It's a, it's, it is a historic uh, retreat by the Senate for 75 years, and yep. they're, they're where they, their predecessors put them. But that's why I think it's important uh, for Donald Trump, once inaugurated, to move very quickly in the early days of his a presidency to abrogate this deal. We've got to send a clear political signal that it's a strategic mistake. We've got to warn companies, give them fair warning that any deal they do through a European subsidiary is very much at risk. Uh, this, this is an urgent, urgent matter. When the Ayatollahs get nuclear weapons, they're the biggest uh, financer of terrorism around the world. What if they give a terrorist group a nuclear weapon? This is extremely yeah. dangerous you know, for us, for Israel and others. And you know, it is one of those things that seems to me uh, to go without saying. Why would they not take 
I mean, no matter what his interests are, how perverse his interests are as president of the United States, how could he not see exactly what you have said? Uh, Be it's because his worldview is completely backwards. He thinks that well, if we only could convince the Ayatollahs that America is not a threat to them, they'll say, oh, my goodness, right. we don't need nuclear weapons and sweetness and light will break out. It's a basic misconception. Absolutely. Which suggests to me that you're saying that uh, we all owe a debt of gratitude to Donald Trump for preventing a third term of the same sort of thing. A absolutely. Ambassador John Bolton. Thanks for being here, and we wish you all the best. Thank you, Lou.